Alright guys, welcome to this week's episode. Today we're going to be discussing summer food plot blends using something other than corn and soybean to accomplish an attraction or a nutritional goal on your property. And uh, right now we're standing in a cereal grain and annual clover food plot. And I'm glad we went that route other than like sorghum, cow peas, um, just different types of summer food in this food source because we're dealing with severe drought this year. We're at a five week drought um, and it doesn't look like it's going to end anytime soon. 10 day forecast still shows no rain. So we could be well into July with uh, just about no rain and we're standing in a lush clover plot. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to mow the rye out before it went to seed. Uh, all this does have seed in it. And when we do come through here and we mow this, hopefully later this summer, we're likely going to have some um, volunteer rye coming up at the wrong time. I say the wrong time being that I like to plant rye like late August, early September. That way it's young, it's short, it's tender, it's very palatable come deer season. So no big deal. We already know that we're going to be coming through here. We're going to be terminating this clover. This is an annual clover. We put the annual clover in here just to add nitrogen for our brassicas come fall. So the plan was, was to plant annual clover. We use the frost seed method. Uh, if you guys don't know what frost seeding is, we do have an episode on that in our library. Go check that out. So for the clover in this, we came through in the winter and we frost seeded this and it turned out great. Our rye was already planted in the fall and we knew it was going to green up early. About March is typically when we see our rye come on. So we're using the rye to help suppress weeds to then help the clover get established. Rye is an allelopathic, meaning that it does release a toxin in the soil that makes it hard for certain crops, grasses to grow, which actually works out good as far as suppressing weeds to help the clover get established. For some reason, it doesn't seem to have any effect on the clover. So as this blend here works out great. Plant your rye in the fall, and then you know even if you wanna add brassicas or anything else to it, that's okay as well. But as far as this mix that we have in this food plot and discussing a good summer food source, a good summer attraction for you guys, what we did was we planted rye in here came in the winter, frost seeded our annual clover. We have like three or four different types of annual clover in here. And then we let that go. And the plan was when we were roller crimping the rest of our food sources to get ready for our summer blends, like our soybeans and things like that, we were gonna come through and mow this rye out before it went to seed. Then we got hit with extreme drought. That was unfortunate, but that's okay. We're just gonna let this go. I'll show you guys here in a second. I'm gonna reach down on the ground. It is bone dry, rock hard. And this whole stand here is lush. We still have moisture in the ground. Soil soft, we have a root system. We have ground cover. We have little to any weeds in this food source. So by not stressing the clover out, by not mowing this, we allowed this to go through that drought period and we're doing just fine. So that tells me when we do start getting rain, I can come through here, I can mow all this rye out. That's gonna stimulate the clover. clover keep on growing for a while. I want it to get as tall as it can. I want it to produce the best root system it possibly can because we're not tilling this. We are going to come through and we are going to terminate it. We'll probably wind up using a herbicide to get rid of this. If you're not big on herbicide, unfortunately, you would likely have to do a tillage route. But for me, I'm doing a no-till system on this farm. I'm trying to use minimal tillage, if any at all. I will have to come through on a calm day when the wind's not blowing spray this with herbicide, terminate it, do that right before rain, and then get our brassicas planted in here. So this is just showing that you guys can use an alternative to like corn and soybeans, especially if you have smaller food plots like this. You know, this is less than like a quarter acre. Um, soybeans probably wouldn't do that great in here. They would grow just fine, but they would get, you know, just completely hammered by deer. So depending on your deer herd, um, what you're surrounded with, whether that's agriculture, or if you're just in a big wood setting, uh, is gonna determine what you should be planting. So if you're in an area that's highly pressured, then the clover and rye like this is gonna work phenomenal. So you come through, terminate it, get your fall crop in the ground, and then what I'll do is to start this rotation right back up, I'll come back through, and then probably you know a couple weeks after the brassicas are growing, I'll top seed all this with rye again, 
that rye is going to start this process back over. Come the next spring, that rye is going to start greening up, you know, March. Sometimes it can even be February, depending on weather. Then you're going to have an outstanding food source for your turkeys. Late winter, early spring time, that's when I'm going to come in. I'm going to frost seed all my annual clover. And the reason I'm using annual and not perennial is just that I'm doing a rotation. And you could do this exact same thing with a perennial to get it established and started and it would work just fine. The only difference is what I'm doing is I'm terminating my clover before fall. You would let your clover go into the fall. What we have right here is we have cover. The deer are not eating the rye, obviously. You can see the seed heads here. They're not touching this. This is not super palatable. And we do have some broadleafs and, you know, different weeds in here, some ragweed, mare's tail, things like that, that I do see that they've nipped on. And that's a good food source. The clover, they're obviously eating the clover. It's still palatable. This is actually just acting as ground cover, which is kind of nice because we do have fawns. Actually, I saw two fawns on the way in here to film this. They were coming down the hill, and I'm sure they were coming in here. I can see beds all over in this. So this is a good spot that acts as cover and food for the deer. They have a clover down low. They have this as side cover. They're bedding in it. All around this is a killer food source for the summer and something maybe you guys should think about. You know, just because you can't plant corn and soybeans doesn't mean you can't have a highly attractive food source, you know, pulling deer in all year round. This is one of those areas I want deer to be associated this spot with, you know, a food source all year round. I don't want to lose that attraction or that pull. I've got a really good stand location with a good wind direction, good access. This is an area that I can consistently get on deer year to year. Why would I not want a food source in here year round? These does stay around, the bucks come through here a couple times in the summer to check it out, make sure there's still food in here, and then I know come fall they're coming back in here. We've got a scrape tree down at the end of this, it's about 30 yard shot from the deer stand. It just works out great. I'm trying to stay consistent with my program. I am rotating crops, you know, from food plot to food plot, but once you come up with a rotation like this where you're using annual clover, annual rye, and then you know that you're going to come back through and you're going to start your brass gun rye mix back up over again back during the fall, then you've created this rotation that not only is creating a quality food source, but I'm building soil. I have ground covering. You know, I didn't come through here, mow all this, let this stuff dry up, burn out, and then, you know, the soil temperatures would be 180 degrees. You got no ground cover. I mean, just off to the side of this thing, there's dirt mounds that are rock hard, where this, I can still, you know, push my hand down in the soil quite a ways, and there's still moisture in it. Most of that's just due to the dew in the morning, and then it's just retaining it. Um, it is a little bit shady in here. I actually was kind of surprised. We cleared all this out. We had open canopy, but some of the trees are starting to kind of bend over now. So we'll have to come back through, do some more edge feathering, clean up the side a little bit. But as far as the summer attraction, this is great. We'll do a follow-up um, when we terminate all this and we come back through and we plant our brassica mix in here to show you guys exactly what we're talking about and what this rotation looks like. And we'll just show you the whole system as it goes on. And we're gonna be implementing this to our other two food sources as well. We have a larger food plots, our biggest one's about an acre. And I planted cow peas, sorghum, and soybeans in there. It was gonna be a trial this year. I was excited about it, but we got drought. If I would have done this in that food source, that soil would be better, all around the food plot would be better, and I'd have more deer in it, and it would have been a good quality attraction, where right now it's not. So, lesson learned. This is something to think about, especially if, you know, every couple of years you see drought. This is drought tolerant, you know, this is combating the drought. This is doing exactly what it's supposed to do, and it's providing a high quality forage for the deer and cover. Thanks for tuning in on this week's episode, guys. We'll see you next week.